Hey guys, so I was thinking a little bit about uh, my journey and I thought, you know what, I've been talking about um, IVF and PGD, but a lot of people really probably don't understand the process of PGD and um, a lot of the people I've been chatting with lately since sharing my story have asked a lot of questions about it. So I just thought I would do a video and uh, talk a little bit about the process of PGD compared to regular IVF, what it is, how it works. Uh, so that you know kind of as I'm going through the process uh, what it's going to be like and obviously it's all new to me as well so I only know what I've read um, and what I've been told is going to happen but uh, it'll kind of give you a general idea of what it's all about. So PGD is pregenetic testing basically of the embryos. Um, leading up to PGD the IVF process is actually the same as normal IVF. So uh, for me, that looks like, sorry, uh, for me, that looks like starting the nose spray on day 21 of my last cycle, which was on Saturday, October 15th, and I am now on the nose spray for two weeks, and on October 28th, I have an ultrasound booked, and that ultrasound is just called a baseline ultrasound, and the reason for it is to um, just make sure that everything looks good, there's no cysts or anything like that. So that's on October 28th, and then once we get the go-ahead from that, I would normally have been starting uh, the hormone injections the next day. However, the next day is a Saturday, and they suggested and really wanted me to wait and start on the Monday instead of on Saturday. So that's what we're going to do. So on October 31st, I will be starting the injections. Now, I don't know a whole lot about all of my other meds yet. They were supposed to come today, but I still haven't gotten any notification for them so I'm hoping tomorrow I know it's super weird to be excited to get $1,500 worth of three pens of hormones to stab myself with but I am excited about it and I'm looking forward to just getting that part over with so we can move on and uh, hopefully have a successful treatment so um, right now the nose spray is five times a day it's every four hours that I'm awake it's one spray in each nostril um, and then when I start the injections on October 31st, I believe my dosage of nose spray goes down um, and it goes down closer to the egg retrieval. So the next step is uh, on day four after I start the hormone injection. So that will be on November 3rd. I have to go um, and have blood work done in Regina, which is a few hours away from here for anyone who's not local. And um, get same day blood work done to show them whatever they need to see and if we get the go-ahead that everything's good from there we will be heading to Calgary which is about eight hours from where I live. I am from Estevan, Saskatchewan, Canada and Calgary is in Alberta. It's about eight hours away and that's where we are going to be um, doing our PGD. It's only done a few places in Canada so that's why we're going there. And so we'll be leaving around November 5th to go to Calgary if all is well. Um, and then we are planning to need to be in Calgary for anywhere from two to three weeks time uh, for the rest of the procedures and treatments. Um, so from there, you do have some other meds and things that you, you need to go on, but um, I'm not going to get into that all right now because I don't have my stuff yet, so I don't know the exact um, everything that we're going to be on. But where it differentiates is after the egg retrieval. So about one week after we get to Calgary, we're thinking around November 14th will be the day of the egg retrieval. And egg retrieval is, um, it's a surgery. They put you out um, under general anesthetic and they retrieve the eggs. So that's kind of part of normal IVF. And what happens with PGD is we need to test a cell from the embryo. So how that works is um, on day three, so three days after we have the egg retrieval um, on November 14th-ish, so around November 17th, they will, when the embryos are three days old, they will take one cell from each of those embryos. Now at day three, the embryo, um, the embryos are only about five to eight cells and they need to take one cell from each of those embryos to send away for testing. So what they do is they do a biopsy, they take one cell from each embryo. So we're hoping with egg retrieval, I mean, there's a big um, variety of 
amount of eggs that are retrieved in people in IVF, but we are hoping slash me, I'm hoping for like 15 follicles to be matured at least because the bigger number we have, uh, the more chance we have of, of ending up with healthy embryos. However, you also need to be careful and they need to be careful not to overstimulate you because if you get too many, you are at risk of um, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is um, quite dangerous to your body and they would likely end up canceling your fresh cycle. So we don't want that to happen either. So you can have too many and then obviously you don't want too little either. So it's really, um, you know, just kind of trial and error. And once I'm there, I'll be having blood work and ultrasound each day leading up to the retrieval to see if I need to adjust my meds at all. Um, okay, that was kind of sidetracked. So back to day three, they are going to take one cell from each embryo and they are going to overnight ship that cell, those cells, to a lab in New Jersey that we are working with. Uh, the lab is called Reprogenetics and we've been working with them for quite a while um, to create our test. So um, back in May when I had Bria and we had decided to go ahead with the PGD, we contacted the lab and they started creating the test. It took them three months to create the test that is going to test um, the cells that we send them from our embryos to see if they are affected with the gene that we carry that is fatal or not. Um, so they will get one cell from each embryo. They will test them. So they'll have them by day four after our retrieval. They'll test them and then by the morning of day five, they will send the results to our clinic that we're working with in Calgary. And so at that point, we will know which of our embryos are affected with the gene and which ones are not affected with the gene. So in turn, that tells us which ones uh, we can safely implant or not implant. So that is kind of the difference with PGD. Now, um, there's a lot of things that have to go right for us to get to that point. Um, we have to, my body has to react properly to the meds. We have to get enough follicles um, maturing and we have to get enough eggs. They have to fertilize properly. Um, they have to survive to day three for the biopsy. Then once they're biopsy, they still have to survive the biopsy and make it to day five. Um, at that point on the morning of day five, if we get good news that we have some embryos that came back healthy and not affected with the gene, we will be able to go in that day for the transfer and they will transfer, um, depending on how many we have, we're going to aim for two embryos, but if we do not have two healthy and we only have one, then obviously we would do one. Um, but our goal is to implant two healthy embryos and hope that one of them at least uh, takes. So then at that point, you still have to um, wait and those embryos still have to implant and there's always a chance, sorry my phone's being silly, there's always a chance um, for chromosome problems as well. Now with the type of testing we're doing because we wanted to do a fresh transfer uh, we are not able to test the chromosomes. However, if there is something that goes wrong in this whole process and we have to cancel our fresh cycle, um, we would need, and that would mean by day five or at the latest day six, um, those embryos would need to be frozen because if they're not implanted by day five or six, then they start to die. So they have to either be implanted or transferred into your uterus or they need to be frozen right away. So if for some reason we can't do that fresh transfer and we need to freeze them all, then we're probably going to change it to a day five bi biopsy rather than a day three biopsy. And that will also allow us to test for chromosomes. Um, there were pros and cons to doing a day three biopsy and a fresh transfer as opposed to doing a day five biopsy and a frozen transfer. A frozen would mean we would have to do the retrieval, do all that, and then go back in four to six weeks to have the actual transfer done. Um, but we opted for the fresh, which does mean we will not be testing chromosomes. So there is always that little bit of worry in the back of my mind, obviously as well. So that's kind of our timeline. We're hoping for uh, a transfer, if all goes well, to be around November 19th. I mean, your days are going to change a little bit depending on how you react to the meds and all of that stuff. So 
Um, I think that's about all I have. Um, so that's the difference between regular IVF and PGD. With regular IVF, they would fertilize the eggs and then they would transfer them back in. We have that extra step of biopsy, doing a biopsy of each of the embryos, shipping the cell to the lab in the US, having them test that cell and then getting the results before we continue um, so that we can ensure that we don't have to keep going through this and putting our babies through this as well. So we don't want, uh, you know, to have this keep happening and this is our best chance at uh, preventing that. So that's what PGD is all about. Um, as far as cost goes, I'm sure everybody knows that IVF is quite expensive um, on its own. Uh, PGD is about double the cost of regular IVF. Um, so it is a lot. Um, it differs depending on if you're in Canada or the US, um, but for what we're paying um, here compared to what regular IVF is, it's, it's double the cost. So um, we really hope it works. It's going to give us our very best chance. And all I can really say is how grateful I am that through all of this and after having Nate, that we were able to uh, use his DNA and his uh, all the samples we got from him and everything to actually have them find the gene we were dealing with and that uh, we had the mutation on because if we were not able to find that gene, this would not be an option. So we are very grateful that even, even though all we've been through, that we were able to find this gene because it is extremely rare. Very few doctors, geneticists, or anybody have ever dealt with it. Um, there are some cases, but about 200 or less recorded cases. So like I said, it's very rare and we are lucky that they did find the gene and that we have this as an option because if we didn't know the gene we were dealing with, we would not be able to go this route and um, hopefully um, eliminate or at least greatly reduce the chances of having another baby with short rib polydactyly. Uh, they say that our success rate is about 90% or not success rate, sorry, that their rate of um, being right is about 90%. Um, so there is still an, a bit of an error rate there, but it's better than what we're dealing with. So, uh, you know, we just have to trust that, that they're amazing and so smart and that they know what they're doing and they're going to obviously do their best and, and in providing us the right information and accurate information about each embryo. So um, we'll just have to trust them and hope that we we hit that percent, that 90, 90 plus percent of uh, success for that. And then overall the success for IVF um, to work is about the same as, as any other IVF. However, because fertility is not the issue with us. Um, we're not doing IVF because I can't get pregnant or I can't carry a baby or I don't ovulate or I don't, or I have issues with my lining or anything like that. That's not the problem. That's not why we're doing IVF. We're only doing this so that we can do the genetic testing. So I'm hoping that that gives us a little bit um, greater of a success rate or a better chance of it working. Um, maybe ups our numbers a little bit. I'm hoping because getting pregnant, staying pregnant isn't so much the problem for us. So that's my hope. All right. If you have any questions at all about PGD, um, that I, anything I missed, then just comment on this video. I'd love to answer your questions. Like I said, it's all new to me as well, but we are so very grateful, um, that we have this option that we were able to determine the gene that they were able to successfully create the test and that we are now so very close to going forward with this process, although it still seems like it's all an eternity away for me. But, um, and I'm also super grateful for everyone watching this video and um, everyone that's following our journey through this. The reason I decided to share um, is because I wanna, you know, have this out there for anyone who is gonna be going through IVF or PGD or anything like that to know they're not alone. And also um, I've been very open about our losses and especially lately when I did share my whole story. So, um, you know, my goal is to help people and um, break the silence. I don't want to go through this alone and I know I have a lot of support through all of you and my family and friends. So 
that's why I've chosen to share uh, this journey as we go. So thanks so much and I will check back in hopefully tomorrow, uh, maybe even later today, but probably not, um, with my meds and show you my opening of the box because I'm super excited to get them. All right, have a great day guys.